Would you like me to elaborate or give quite a, a shortened definition or understanding of it? I, I would like you to be authentic and do you. <laughs> <laughs> because that's why, that's why I wanted to talk to you because you're authentic. Mm. So do you. Whatever you like to do, I go with the flow. Mm. So for me, um, definitely the reason why I also spoke to you about um, – having that as one of our topics is because it comes in so frequently with in my interactions with my clients. And I think it's something that's quite overlooked. Um, and my understanding of it is that when we are experiencing childhood and, and, and going through those periods of our lives, a lot of what we, a lot of our behaviors that are formed are aimed at we have to build a relationship with our parents and we have to do that for survival because as a child, you're dependent on your caregiver. Um, mm -hmm. And you learn so many different coping strategies and ways to manage by just trying to build that relationship because without that caregiver, you're going to be isolated. You're not going to have food. You're not going to be safe. And sometimes those or up frequently, those coping strategies continue throughout our lives. So we, let's say, for example, when we were younger, we were taught that when mom comes home, we never know what mood mom is going to be in. So we need to keep a lookout, look at mom's facial expressions, behaviors, everything to see, okay, mom is not in a good mood. I need to adapt accordingly. I need to quickly go to my room or be quiet or whatever it is. And as an adult, those same behaviors frequently um, oh, we're still exhibiting those same behaviors. And I see it often with my clients where they still, for example, in that example, have the need to adapt themselves to the people around them without them understanding why. And why? often that's because it links to the, the fact that when they were young, they had to adapt and change in order to survive in their environment. And they're still doing that. Even though they're actually in, di in a different environment, they're no longer in, in having to s sort of fight for survival from their parents, but they're still adopting those same coping strategies, which then become problematic within their adult lives. So, I, and, and that's just an example, but the inner child work allows you to look at what is this kid going through, this little kid inside of us, how is he or she having to adapt and survive within the within his or her life? Or how does how do they think they have to? That no longer is actually applicable, um, but but it's still causing oftentimes destruction in the lives. Because now you can imagine that person that had to adapt according to the, what mood their mum is in. They are going to monitor every social interaction they're in and they're going to adapt according to who they think people need them to be, which doesn't lead to authentic interactions. It doesn't lead to them being true to their emotions and expressing what they're struggling with, which obviously causes a lot of mental health conditions and a lot of um, disruptions um, in their lives. So I try and help my clients to see those links between what we're going through now and how that's sometimes linked to childhood so that they can actually break those patterns and have more self-awareness in it as well. And then without going off too quickly, there's also the element of almost the inner critic. Um, the other day I was speaking to a client and he was saying that, um, oh, I hate this part of me. I hate that I have to adapt um, to the people around me. And I said, I understand that this is bringing up frustration for you, but I also want you to, or I want to encourage you to actually say to that little kid inside, I'm sorry that you had to do that. I'm sorry that you felt like you had to change who you are to adapt to the world around you. It's okay now. You don't have to do that anymore. You're safe now. You're in a different environment. And and by doing that, by speaking that way to our inner child, it's actually breaking and reparenting ourselves and breaking some of these patterns that we did pick up from childhood. Um, yeah, so that obviously takes a lot of shapes within the work with my clients, but that's basically a long answer for you. Yeah. No, 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 it was, no, it's not long. This is exactly why I wanted to do this with you. 
this this is what this is what we're this is what we're going to be doing hopefully more than just now uh, and we'll be able to do this again on other shows uh, because because it what you're saying makes me want to ask you this let's let's say we're talking about a young lady how can this manifest itself this type of uh, behavior adjustment constantly adjusting to the room that you're in mm-hmm. instead of give allowing yourself to be authentic uh, how can that manifest itself for a young woman and for a lady uh, let's say let's say at work let's say at work how can those that inner child from the past uh, kind of still be haunting and holding on to her even when she's in a work in a work setting mm. well it's actually really hard at work because um often times with people that are very traumatized or even everyday people they they were taught that you need to silence yourself you need to silence that voice in order to be what other people want you to be and the consequences okay. of that is that as soon as conflict arises that is extremely threatening to every survival mechanism mechanism you've put in place So in a work context when you are required to put down boundaries or express your point of view or bring a proposal up or whatever it is that can be that can challenge every way that you've learned to survive where right. and I've had that with clients where they don't want to speak up they doubt themselves they they're petrified within a work context but actually they have the skills and they're in that position for a reason but they're constantly doubting themselves and also wanting to look to other people for approval for other people's recognition of do you think this is the best but actually they if they went forward they would know that that is there's a reason why that they are coming to that conclusion but they want that recognition from others because it feels safer so within a work environment it can actually induce a lot of anxiety for clients like that for people that believe that I need to be I need to make sure I need to check in with someone else I need to make sure that this is okay for the people around me it it can bring up a lot of anxiety if if that's the case then they can also feel that same anxiety then let's say we transition that same young young lady that same woman that same young adult into a let's say family setting mm-hmm. dealing with her siblings or her parents how can it manifest and show itself there Well often um not always but often there are so many family dynamics that have encouraged that behavior because obviously the family was the first example of relationships of interaction okay. of if i say mm-hmm. i don't like this how is my mom going yeah. to respond to me how is my dad going to react yeah. am i going to be shouted at or am is is my difference of opinion going to be accepted so obviously often right. that or where a lot of these dysfunctional patterns have started right. to emerge so mm-hmm. and and it can often like we have the saying where we say systems don't like change and when i'm saying okay. systems like the family system often times doesn't like change they don't like someone all of a sudden and that sometimes what happens with therapy is they a client comes and they work through these things and they find their voice now they go back in the family system and the family doesn't like this the family is being yeah, challenged right, correct yes yeah, right, right. The, the structure the structure has been challenged it, it, whether exactly. whether it be the prior, parental dynamics or the older siblings whatever it may be has been challenged yeah. uh, go ahead you were saying I, okay i get what yeah. you're saying go ahead the family definitely doesn't like that they don't like that right. being challenged right. and and that's why often in the work that i do when a client is ready i will encourage them to to look at family therapy because when we do family therapy we can gently start challenging or changing that structure as well that of that system so that it's not just the individual that's changing but it's also the system that they're going back into um so that it can make it more sort of cohesive um but it is it, it can be really challenging because you can imagine if you're doing all of this work with someone and they're finding their voice and they're having an opinion and they're comfortable with saying I don't agree with that I don't like this and now they're going back into a family that that just that doesn't want them to have their own opinion and it, and it puts them back 
to square one, as it were, in that same type of behavior, dysfunctional behavior that that silences their voice. Yeah. How does yeah. how does how does a how does a person then how would that same young woman or or man? I get a lot of DMs from guys, so guys don't get mad. Now I'm just thinking I'm ignoring you. But but how can a person, this young lady, then start to make the steps toward finding her voice? What would you say? That a, uh, that a person, a young lady can do? Some steps that could be applicable that they could try. Well, I think starting to, to for one, create in a safe space, if possible, <laughs> um, separate from mm-hmm. that family okay. dynamic, whether that means having a close friend that you can speak to and sort of like, okay. you know, talk about these dynamics with, but having a safe space where you can actually explore what you've been experiencing and feeling, um, okay. and then starting to have awareness about these interactions, about these um, these routines and these these patterns within the family, because then, um, and I see it often in my clients, they start to to identify it. For example. Okay. Um, okay. The other day I had one of my clients interacting with her father and the father became um, angry and he said things to her and she immediately stepped back and she thought to herself, but that's the, your thing. That's there you go, there you go. That's, oh, yeah. that. and, and she realized that he's projecting, he's putting a lot of his emotions and his maybe insecurities or whatever it is onto her and because she then has that um that perspective and she can identify and see these patterns from happening that she can identify then she she has that perspective and she can step away and say you know what that's actually your things coming in here it's not mine which she then where previously she would be stuck in that cycle she would be furious or she would be whatever she would apologize not realizing that this is actually not her baggage to carry. So that perspective really helps because then you can start changing it. So so when, let's say I, let's say mm-hmm. I'm in a situation and I start to find myself dancing around others, trying to make sure that they're okay with me. That's exhibiting yeah. that type of behavior you're talking about then. Mm-hmm. Is that... Is that yeah. kind of what you're saying? Yeah. So then what what would I have to do? I would have to do what you said your client did. I would pretty much have to recognize that what's really happening is happening outside of me. And what, what I'm doing is I'm reacting to something uh, because of the way I was conditioned in the past. Is kind of what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So what would you – so go ahead. No, and then by having that perspective, you you move away from it. And it's sort of tricky to say where do we go from there because it it, uh, it depends a lot on the family dynamics because, I mean, some families Mm – are open enough and self-aware enough that you can go to them and say, maybe at a different time, maybe when things are calmer, say, mom, I don't like it when you actually speak to me in that way or whatever it is, where for other families – you can't say that because you're going to be ostracized and rejected. And obviously, yeah. Um, so different family. Uh, uh, definitely- even, mm-hmm. even, even attacked for some, I'm, I'm just saying from what I hear for some people, they even get a, attacked for, for, yes. for even broaching the subject, even, even going down that road. Mm-hmm. And so therefore they avoid going down that road altogether. Mm-hmm. Well, then that, then that means that, that, that person will go back to me. Make it about me. Let's make this about. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, 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 so then, if that's the case, and if I'm not going to go down that road because I don't want to receive the retribution and the and, and the tribulation from, from from opening my mouth and, yeah. and 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 going against the grain, then is it possible then that in let's we're talking about me, then I would carry that into my relationships as well. That same type of of backing backing up, keeping my voice silent, docile behavior. I would start to lose my voice even in romantic relationships and if, if, if we were talking. Mm-hmm. Is that possible also? Yes. Yeah, so one thing I just want to add to this as well is that people um, sometimes even start using substances or um, okay. sleeping too much, 
working too much, whatever it is. Eating too much, pornography, yeah. pornography, all these other things, drinking too much, overeating, uh, going into a shell, as it were, to cope with the, yeah. the well, they're doing that for what reason? I'll let you say. Why would well, they be doing those things? It, it's it's a, it's a way to comfort. It's a way to self soothe. For example, someone that um, comfort eats, they're doing that because of the actual comfort and self soothing that they get from the food. It makes them feel contained when the world around them feels chaotic. Um, and but and and what you were saying about entering into relationships. That's why it's so incredibly important. For us to do the work with with people and and for people to actually get help for these things is because if, if these things are unresolved and unacknowledged and if you're going through your life without the awareness of what's going on how these things are impacting you then these patterns keep repeating and i see that so often with clients where let's say they've been in three abusive relationships and they keep saying, but how does this keep happening? Right, um, right, 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 right. Oh, and, and it's, it's sometimes because of their unresolved emotions that they are not deliberately, they want to get as far away from mm -hmm. it as they can, but they end up choosing people that make them feel the way that they feel they deserve to feel. So if, if I right. feel like I right. deserve anything right. better, I'm going to keep choosing a partner that's going to treat me badly because, well, that's all I deserve. Right. So we need, we need to have this awareness and this, yeah, because with the awareness, then we can stop these cycles from repeating and we can actually change it and we can take the power back where if we so, don't have that awareness, these patterns just continue. With, with the awareness, uh, if that's the case, uh, so... Uh, a person because no, nope, let's go back. I, I'll be the uh, I'll be the therapist guinea pig. So with the awareness, then I must put myself in a position where um, not only am I aware, but I now, even if I fully don't understand the family dynamics, but I know it enough to know that okay, I need to change the pattern in which I'm living my life emotionally, and I need to create an emotional safe place for myself. I need to have somebody, I like what you said much earlier, really makes sense, uh, to have someone that I can bounce these things off of and get some perspective. Um, but let's say, let's say a person is maybe not overeating, maybe they're going the other way, maybe they're over-exercising, <laughs> maybe they're, they're super into fitness to cope, maybe they're super into nature, they're finding all these ways to, to cope. Yeah. Is it always going to be something that's bad if they are not coping yes right if they um, don't cope in the long run is it bad i'm asking Instead there's going statement. to be consequences there's going to okay. be an effect i'm not saying that it's always going to be these um, overly dramatic consequences but it can be i mean if you are Let's say now you're a father, you have, you chose a, a, a wife, whatever, um, and you're in a relatively happy relationship, but these issues are unresolved. As soon as your child says something that challenges maybe Correct. Um, Correct. the way that you were raised, you're going to, that's going to immediately yep. bring you to the defensive and you're going to either attack or you're going to shut the kid down um, because you are uncontained. I often say this to my parents, if you are uncontained, then you struggle so much yeah. when that kid says something that challenges your authority. Yeah. You overcompensate and you react to a much greater extent than is needed because of your own inability to, you're not contained. So you yeah. freak out and you attack. Um, so even in those ways, it's going to have an effect on, on some of your relationships and on yourself um, because yeah. you're moving away from what's authentic and true and where your pain really is and what you're really going through and whenever we move away from what's authentic for us that comes with a cost so yes there will always be a consequence yeah. to it